I'm Jack Osborne, and you're listening. This is Hudson Hammond, and you're listening to... I'm Richard C. Hoagland, and you're listening to... I'm Mark Bell, and you're listening to Dr. J Radio Live. We have an unidentified flying object. Welcome back to another great episode of Dr. J Radio Live. I'm your host, Dr. J, broadcasting from the City of Angels. As you know, we are internationally syndicated, starting with Late Night in the Midlands and, of course, the U.S. affiliates with that in AM and FM, as well as in the U.K. Deep Program Radio Network and their AM and FM affiliates. Now, today, we bring you two powerhouse guests, our two. You all probably by know by now, ever since Donald J. Trump has been elected, that I'm pretty outspoken when it comes to being a Republican. Before that, I would hold it back in, so I had to sort of hide it a little bit when I had to get Michael Dukakis back onto the show, so you guys will get a crash course in the DSA, meaning Democratic Socialists of America, plus whatever else he's got to talk about, including Elizabeth Warren possibly making a 2020 run. Hour one, we bring to you an international amazing guest. He's got so much to him. TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society. I've always thought that was a really cool group. And I, ever since I've been watching Ghost Hunters, I've always enjoyed it. On Sci-Fi, for all of these who've missed it, it's been going, I think, for 11 years until it finally ended. But our guest can tell us more about that. So if you haven't seen the promotion, which I'm pretty sure you have, well, then I might as well introduce our guest now, Mr. Grant Wilson. Grant, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you? I am doing excellent, as you can see. So, there, as you know before, I talked about a few things that I wanted to dig in with you, which kind of leads up to who you are today. One thing I also should say is that you are the art director and developer of Rather Dashing Games. If you want to tell us what that is or what kind of games you're involved in, that'd be pretty cool, too. Sure thing, man. I mean, you've seen me on Ghost Hunters a lot, you know, and I've been investigating the paranormal for 30 years, but... There are other sides to me. Um, I've been um, an artist ever since I could hold a a, a pencil. Um, and so uh, I put that art to good use, uh, illustrating, um, you know, family-style board games for the company Rather Dashing Games. I helped develop them as well. Um, our games are, you know, uh, my partner Mike Ritchie and I are, you know, we're, we're avid board gamers. And uh, we love the heavy, crazy games and D&D and all that. But... <clears throat> We also like quick, clever games, and so we thought we'd make up games that catered to uh, both the hardcore heavy gamer and the novice gamer who's never really played anything so that everyone can have a good time playing them. So um, our games are about less than five minutes to learn, less than an hour to play, and they're usually very easy to learn um, but difficult to win. So um, that, that's what that's all about. The reason why I asked you about that right off the bat is I guess people will find out this about me. I'm a huge Magic the Gathering player since 1993 yeah. when Unlimited came out. And yes, I still got my Power 9, you know, and I still play a – well, it's not Type 1 anymore. I think it's called Vintage. So I thought that that's really interesting. Okay, now I'm going to wind back the clock to when you were 15 years old. And that was something that sort of led to how you worked with – uh, Jason Hawes, and for all you out there who have heard that interview on Beyond Reality Radio, he was one of the hosts that I was the guest on. Anyhow, before you'd hooked up to what I'd read about you, Grant, was that one thing that you wanted to talk to him about what was happening to you in the woods on a recurring basis. What happened? Well, um, for me, uh, you know, I hadn't really thought too much about about ghosts. I was big in the UFOs and uh, cryptozoology and conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I hadn't given too much thought to ghosts because um, the idea that ghosts were kind of all around us kind of made sense to me. It's the way I was raised. Um, but there was the aspects of the paranormal I hadn't really given much thought to. And when I was 15, I would go and play or hang out outside with a couple of my best friends. Um, and excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, so I apologize for the cough. Oh, no, no problem. Um, but we're uh, we were out there in the woods and uh, just kind of hanging around, and I started seeing something um, like a shimmer in the woods, almost like the predator's uh, cloaking ability, you know, this kind yes, of distortion. Yes. And you know, I, my friends couldn't see it, and it was driving me nuts. 
Um, and eventually it became clearer and clearer day after day we go and, and hang out there. <clears throat> and I was able to see what this thing was. And I don't like to talk too much about it in too much detail um, <clears throat> just because it's very, it's very different and very odd. And, and people look at you like you have three heads, you know, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. But I didn't choose this to happen. I didn't go looking for it. It just happened. But um, eventually this thing started mimicking one of my friends, and I had my friend stand behind me. Um, and I proceeded to tell him what he was doing based on the actions of this entity. And and uh, that made me feel like I wasn't losing my mind at 15. Um, but when stuff like that happens, you've got a logical head, you know, brain in your head. You have to you have to try to find the answer. So this went on for years and and years and years and years. And I, in, in an attempt to find the answers to what was going on with me, I came across people that were terrified to live in their own homes. And, and um, I realized I had to put myself in other paranormal situations to try to learn more about my own situation. So I exchanged comfort for, for uh, exposure to the paranormal. And, uh, you know, it went from there. And, you know, you, we both say we don't choose what happens, but at the same time, Grant, you would have to agree that if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have gone down that road. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I would have obviously, I might have been uh, more heavily involved in, in the UFO stuff or whatever, um, which is different because when it's UFO stuff, you get, you know, government or men and black guys knocking on your door with ghosts. You don't really get that much, <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's uh, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for it. I just don't have, I don't have many answers to my own experience now, but you know, thankfully I've been able to help a lot of other people. Now let's talk about when you first joined TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society. Was that before or after you met Jason Haas? So when I met Jay, I, I was, I was actually, um, starting to make my own websites and, um, I found his website and it wasn't the best website. Um, I say that with all due respect. Um, so I called him up and said, Hey, this is a subject I'm interested in. I'd, I'd be happy to redo your website <coughs> for free in exchange, um, for me using it in my portfolio. And so we got together and met to talk about the website, but we actually didn't talk much about the website at all. We talked about our shared frustration with the paranormal field and how, you know, there are people charging you money to look at pictures of dust and, and, uh, charlatans out there. And, and, uh, we decided to join forces and, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. So what was some of the, can you talk about some of the first ghost hunts that you went on? Or here's another twist to it. Did you ever use the skills you had learned as a ghost hunter to go back to the woods? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I've, I've been back several times. Like I said, this stuff uh, penetrated my life pretty fully. Um, I experienced it every day for two years until I moved to Italy for, for a couple of years. Um, I experienced some there. And everywhere I went, it followed me, uh, you know, for the rest of my life. And, and, you know, up to this day, I still, I still have experiences with it and, and I'm still trying to figure it out. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I, like I said, it, it turned out to be something, an aspect of the paranormal that there's very little experience on. And so it was really, really hard to use the skills I had gained. I mean, I used the whole kind of common sense mentality and trying to disprove it and trying to find, you know, as empirical evidence as possible. Um, but it was just really tough. Um, I, thankfully I have had people around me experience it. They see the results of it, but they can't see it. Uh, for example, they might see the impression of the footsteps, so the, the feet crunching on leaves or knocking on walls, or they'll, they'll hear it, see it, but they won't be able to actually see it. Um, and it drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one characteristic. That's actually, yeah, last night, for all you remember, with Keith Linder talking about the poltergeist at his house and also the ghost that's sort of attached to him. Uh, Grant, one thing that he was making clear was that when people were around, it's like this ghost would sort of sit back, you know, even when people yeah. literally living there. Uh, you know, it's where if he's in one area, that's where the action's going to happen. Or you turn your back, that's when the 
you know, a chair or a plant will get thrown across the room sort of thing. Again, are they just being mischievous is the question? Or like you said, there's just so much more to it that we don't understand. And with UFOs, you got something tangible here. You don't got much to go on. Uh, when you got into Ghost Hunters, how long after you started researching with Jason before it turned into a television series, Ghost Hunters? Well, uh, let's see. I I think we started around uh, – it's probably about 10 years or so. No more. Probably about 12 years later. It wasn't until 2004 that Ghost Hunters aired. And we, we reconnected around – like 90 early 90s i'm not sure we we always argue on the date we weren't ever sure when it really happened <laughs> um but it was it was uh, early early 1990s like 92 or something like that around there so we had been doing it for a while and it was kind of odd because you know <clears throat> as the group grew um you know jay and i had investigated together a lot in the beginning and then it got really really uh busy and so he would be one team lead with the group and i would take another team to a different case so we could kill two birds with one stone on a weekend. And um, we had, you know, kind of devised our, our own investigation techniques, even though they, they both, you know, agreed with each other. You have your own styles. And then the show starts and we get, they want us together all the time and we didn't know what to do because our styles are so differently. Uh, we're so different. So uh, it was kind of fun in the beginning to try to figure out how to, you know, balance each other's style and deal with the whole production crew at the same time. Here, here's a question from a listener. Linda Young asks, have you ever taken home a ghost and had to be cleared? So um, this is an interesting question. Um, I, when you're a paranormal investigator, at least for me and those I know, um, you kind of always have activity going on in your home. Um, but it's really hard to say that it's exactly the same entity you just de dealt with. You know, it's really hard to find the identity of a, of a, <clears throat> of an entity to begin with, uh, much less say that the same one is now in your home to say that it followed you home. But I, I really don't mind activity in my house. It makes it easier to deal with, you know, you can just sit there in your pajamas and deal with it rather than have to take a two or three hour ride. But, um, <clears throat> but, uh, if something follows me home, were to follow me home, it would be because it feels like either it, it likes me uh, or it hates me or it feels like I can offer some help. And so um, I don't see it as an attachment or a parasite as Hollywood would, um, you know, make us believe where to me it's like, okay, this thing is really passionate about being with me. Why? And so you try to figure that out. And uh, it's not like you, it's not like a disease you catch at someone's house and now you've got it and you can't get rid of it. Um, more often than not, what you encounter is an intelligent, what we call intelligent human haunting or a person who's passed on. And that person has free will and, and uh, you know, desires, ambitions, addictions, whatever. They still have those things. And, um, and a person only sticks around something um, based on their desires. So, you know, someone might stick around me because they think I'm a good guy or they think I can offer them help, <laughs> you know? Um, so I don't see it too much as, as, as icky as Hollywood would make it. Um, but that does, that stuff does happen. Yeah. You know? Before I jump into some more things I personally wanted to ask you, there is, uh, Adirag Studios has a question. I guess essentially it's what's, what's next for Grant? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> That's a great question. Um, it, you know, when I left uh, Ghost Hunters, everyone thought I kind of left paranormal, which was crazy. You can't ever leave it. I don't ever want to leave it. It's uh, I left the rigors of the schedule of Ghost Hunters, um, but I continue to um, embrace the paranormal and, and investigate it and kind of roll up my sleeves more than ever and try to figure it out. Um, and so I, I ended up trying to, to pitch a bunch of shows of various degrees of difference from, from Ghost Hunters um, to try to, to lift the hood on the paranormal and look deeper into it rather than just run around in the dark more. Um, and I got, I got a lot of resistance. I mean, a lot of people liked what I was teaching, but I think the subject, they didn't know enough about it to understand that, that there's a lot to talk about here. Um, and they told me it was too smart for TV. So I oh. finally came in. 
And uh, one of the chairs had come off the top of this tall stack of chairs. 